Well, I'm Ken Ballard of Ballard King and Associates. We're the uh, consultant on the project. We're a recreation planning firm. There's just a little bit about who we are. We've been in business for over 25 years. This is kind of what we do, help communities build indoor recreation facilities. We've been involved in 700 studies across 49 states, have over 200 facilities open, so about 25 plus projects in New England. There's just some of the listing of some of the ones that we've done around. Um, you may recall, for some of you who were here last time, this is kind of our task list, if you will. Uh, it's an indoor community center study. There are the things that we're doing, and we'll talk about them, are the market analysis, which looks at demographics of the market areas and looks at the presence of other providers, which tells us a lot about the need side of things. We've done a great deal of community input. We did, in fact, in in the October, the first community meeting, we had a series of focus groups. Uh, we also did some kind of stakeholder meetings. And then um, we were here uh, yesterday and today did some more uh, focus group meetings. And then uh, you may be aware that we've done a statistically valid survey of the community, and we'll talk a bit about those results tonight. So that's kind of where we sit right now is through those first couple of big categories. And what we're going to focus a little bit on tonight is, so what does all this information mean that we've gathered? And we're going to talk a bit about some project options and what meets your particular needs. But this is going to be a big question when we go to the council meeting later this evening. Still to be done after we've kind of identified direction for the project is, so uh, if you build this, uh, you know, what's it going to cost to, to build and operate Who's going to be the partners and part of, uh, of, this, of this project if it moves forward as well? So those are the tests we still have to go. We're about halfway to maybe two-thirds two -thirds of the way through our project right now. I'll just talk very briefly about kind of the demographic piece. We looked at two service areas. The first one is kind of in green, didn't show up real well, but that's city of on peel you're right there and then this red area is a much much larger i mean just to put it in perspective that's waterbury over here so it's a huge secondary market area um, that is hopefully what you can draw people from but it'll depend upon what's in the facility where it's located but uh, you know generally uh, any facilities of any magnitude draw from beyond just the corporate boundaries that are there we looked at a lot of different characteristics in this particular case, kind of an infographic that kind of talks to us a little bit about what we know about Montpelier proper. Uh, and then we kind of took some statistics and put them together for the city of Montpelier and also what we call that red secondary service area. The important things are uh, that we look at are just the overall population. There's about, in 2018, an estimate of a little under less than 8,000 people in the city. Uh, about 54,500 in that secondary market area. That's inclusive of the city numbers, so that's part of that whole number. Uh, we know the number of households, the number of families. Uh, household size tells us a lot about the presence of children. Um, ethnicity, obviously, just kind of the cultural makeup of the area. Median age um, and that type of thing. And then the income levels. And the reason we look at those is they all have a direct relationship to utilization of rec indoor recreation facilities and so they're valuable tools in kind of this planning process. So what did we find out out of this? Well, if you're trying to do a facility of any magnitude and it's going to be relying on just drawing users from the city itself, it's going to be pretty hard to make this work. You really don't have enough population in the city uh, so you're going to need to draw well from that secondary service area. If you're going to do anything, anything of any magnitude beyond kind of what's currently in place. Uh, Montpelier itself and even the secondary service area has a reasonably small household size. You have in, in the city fewer homes with children. It's more kind of the, the same number as you see in the, in the state of Vermont as a whole in that secondary service area. So there are a few more children there, but still generally uh, an older population base. And that there's uh, in the next five plus years, there's going to be projected to be a decline in the youth age groups and a pretty dramatic in increase in the senior age categories. That's not unusual. Everywhere you go in the United States right now, there's huge jump ups in the 65 and older category. That's partly the fact that that's the baby boomers moving through the age cohorts across the country. So there's always big numbers.
difference in all those senior age categories. Um, both the service areas have slightly lower median household incomes than the state and certainly than the national numbers. Uh, they're not dramatically lower, but just a little bit. Uh, and then the expenditures for recreation purposes are also a little lower than the state and also uh, uh, lower than the national statistics as well. Not a lot of cultural or ethnic diversity uh, in, in the areas. And uh, one of the other key things is that certainly every day Montpelier has an inflow of people that are coming to the community that don't live here but actually work here. So that's estimated to be at least 4,000 people a day, obviously, during the, the work week. So that's kind of the demographics. We looked at, I won't spend any time on this, what do people participate in? We can able to translate that into the marketplace. We took a number of different um, sports activities, looked at the rates of participation. These are things that could potentially occur in a center uh, to try to get some degree of magnitude on the size of the market. Uh, also, uh, and we looked at different characteristics regarding age, income, a region of the country to kind of come up with an average on that as well. We did the same thing for cultural arts activities as well, try to get a sense of what the, the ratios are in terms of population to rates of participation. That's probably still better. Is that better? Yeah. Yes, thank you. Is, is that better? Perfect. You want to be sleeping soon, so that's <laughs> better. But it's probably a little more visual. Yes. The other key thing is also identifying one. It's the problem is this one right here. It's right in front of the screen. So I don't know what we can do is the presence of other providers. So we looked at not only what other public providers there are, and certainly within Montpelier, there's a number of facilities you can kind of see up there, the existing recreation center on Berry Street, uh, you know, the senior center that's across the street, the outdoor pool, uh, Berry, you have the civic center, uh, the arena, their outdoor pool, nonprofits, swimming hole, it's up in Stowe, it's pretty well known by a lot of people. Uh, the medical center has a little bit, but not a lot, uh, mostly, mostly in a therapy pool. Uh, a couple senior facilities, and certainly the private side from Norwich and their aquatics facility, uh, the Civic Center property, and then you know, a number of private fitness providers, such as Planet Fitness and others. So we recognize there's other providers out there in the marketplace right now. And so they have some impact on uh, the market for a potential new facility. So over the course of my two site visits, we've talked to 11 different individuals or groups. We've kind of listed those that we've talked to and we've gathered information from. And so what kind of we learned from all of this, and some of you were part of those, uh, that certainly there's a need for more indoor recreation space. The existing recreation center on Berry Street doesn't provide enough space or have enough amenities to serve the community in its, its current condition. Um, but some consideration should be given to potentially rehabbing that facility, either as uh, is kind of the answer to the question or as an additional amenity depending upon what else may occur. Uh, site is a major concern. Uh, where would this be go? Where would this go? We heard a lot of people talk about a downtown location was pretty important. Walkability was pretty important. And that kept coming up. Certainly there was a lot of discussion, and rightfully so, well, what's it gonna cost us for a new facility? And uh, you know, how are we gonna fund this? Where do the funding dollars come from? And that's certainly gonna be a major focus of our efforts moving forward from where we are right now. Uh, partnerships will also were discussed. A number of the organizations that we talked to who were part of the discussion was uh, potential partnerships. And um, that's looking for at other governmental units, i.e. other communities. Uh, even the state, local businesses, and other organizations. And realistically, <clears throat> that's gonna be a pretty important part of uh, any facility that might move forward. Some of the key amenities we had come out of the public, or excuse me, the focus group findings were uh, an indoor pool, both with some competitive, maybe a recreational focus, even potentially therapy. Uh, fitness center, gymnasium space, indoor walking track, senior space, some youth space, and also just some more general kind of classroom community spaces that can be used for a variety of different types of uses. So that's kind of what we learned out of the focus group findings. Other key aspect was the statistically valid survey. Survey that was completed by ETC, which is a national uh, survey company, and uh, that was done during November and December. 
they surveyed randomly residents of the city. There, um, they had delivered 300 completed surveys. They actually got a little over 500. So that's a real good turnout. That's more than we expected, and it's tough to do surveys in November, December with the holidays. So, <coughs> excuse me, we were real happy with the response rate on that. And again, you can kind of look at what the, uh, the confidence rate is. Basically, you get a swing of about a little over 4% on the answer. So 50% say they said yes to this. That could be anywhere from 46% to the 54% sort of amount so in simple terms. So let me just kind of give you some of the survey results. I'll go over some of these real quickly. We asked whether people, uh, what they were using now and whether they meet their indoor needs. The biggest response was people using private health clubs. The senior center had a pretty strong response and so did some of the other facilities. We asked uh, what's most important to, that they liked about the existing center if they were users, and a very small percentage of people, which is not too surprising, actually were users of the, the existing Berry Street Center. And considering there's not a lot there, that was a response we figured. But it's only, it was under 20% of people that utilized that facility, and you'd expect that with what was there. And a major, major reason they used it was for the programs that took place there and the hours of operation. Uh, we asked if they had used it, uh, why not? And this was pretty telling, because the first one, one on there was, well, the center doesn't have the recreation spaces and equipment that I desire. Not too surprising, since it's basically a small <coughs> gym area. And then the center doesn't offer the programs and services that I desire, which is directly related to the amenities that are there. So once again, people are saying, man, it doesn't do a lot for me because it doesn't have really what I need. And that's not too surprising, considering that facility. Um, can I ask a question? Sure. Do you want or you want me to hold? I know you can ask as we go on this part. So can we go back to that? Sure. Because I think it's interesting that, so one of the other questions was, what do you most enjoy and what do you most use there? Yeah. What people most use is the gym. Yeah. Yet they say the thing that they need the most is a gym. Yet it's already there. Right. Yeah. So how do you, rec how do you reconcile that? Um, well, I think there's a couple of different things. And so the way the question's working more, what would you want to see in a new facility? And that gym is okay, it's not large, so it can't necessarily handle all the pickleball needs that are there. It can't handle some of the other demands, just from a side perspective. So yes, you have a gym, it's not a large gym. So it limits the numbers of activities, and things like numbers of pickleball players you can get in there, those types of things. So I think that was part of the rationale for why people are like, well, we have a gym, and it, and that's what we like about it, but we also, in a sense, need more gym space. I just don't think it's adequate for what it is. And that, you know, that, that gym is certainly the best part of the building, but it's, it's no gym in terms of it's pretty inadequate for a lot of how it gets even used now. Um, we also, moving forward, ask people, okay, what was the most, most important amenities to include in a new recreation center? Uh, and there were some other things, before, question before that, what's important, but this asks people in a sense to rank their top three. So the blue line represents their first choice. The second kind of orange, well, what do you call that? Orangey, I guess, is the second most, and then the kind of the tan or gray line is, is third. So in this particular case, an indoor pool had both the top in terms of most needed and also the aggregate total by over 10%, 48%, followed by that gymnasium space, and followed by weight cardio, uh, gym, uh, uh, group exercise space, walking track on down the line. This response is not unusual. In most surveys, I would say 90 some percent, a pool will always be in the top two or three. Almost always fitness is in the top two or three. Um, so what the responses here are not that unusual for most communities. Those are the things that people participate in. Even in the sections of the report we did on in terms of rates of participation in different activities, swimming is the number three most popular activity in the United States. So that kind of translates to that's what people do, that's therefore what they want to see. So it also ties into what we see as the most popular. The other things that are going up in terms of rates of participation have been for the last 
10 to 15 years were all fitness related. That again reflects in here. So the fact that these came up as high as they did is not, is not at all surprising. And kind of the rank order is, is somewhat what we would have expected. We also ask people, okay, if aquatics is important, what aspect of aquatics do people want to see and what's most critical in this? This one was a little different. The top one, at 50% of the respondents, again, it's most important, second most, and third most, lanes for lap swimming, followed by water, warm water area for uh, fitness and exercise, and then area for swim lessons. Uh, so these are what you would call more traditional uses of aquatics. That's a little unusual. What we oftentimes see down here is the um, whole question of uh, areas for uh, play and recreational use. In most communities, that's way up here. So what you're looking for is primarily uh, more of the fitness-related aspects of, of aquatics. And that's fine. That helps us define a little bit about from an aquatic standpoint what people are looking for. So that one was uh, pretty different than what we see it from a lot of people. Um, what do you think was most needed from a program perspective? In other words, what do people want to do there? It did kind of line up fitness being number one, health and wellness, aquatics. You know, aquatics was the top amenity, but it was a third on the list of, of what people wanted to do. But still, fitness and aquatics were those kind of main drivers of this. Some after school uh, programming, obviously focused on youth sports, were the other things as well. Now we start getting into what does this mean a little bit more beyond just what the preferences are. We ask people, you know, if you had the facility with the amenities you've indicated or report, in this particular case, it's things like fitness and aquatics, the gymnasium space, and those types of things, how often would you use the center? Again, 45% of the respondents said they would use it several times a week or more, 17% once a week. The important thing in this is everybody said they'd use it at least, I mean, the vast majority of over, basically three quarters said they would use it at least monthly, and only 13% said they'd never use it. So that's pretty high. Now, one of the things, this measures people's intent. Uh, it doesn't measure necessarily reality. But it's kind of like, well, you tell yourself, you know, at the beginning of the year, yeah, I'm going to go walk more. And, and you say, yeah, I'm going to do that. And then here you are, and you're going, yeah, well, I really haven't followed through on that. So it measures intent. It doesn't necessarily uh, direct, directly relate to actual utilization. But still, very strong. It says you, you provide people with what they want. They will, in fact, take advantage of that. Now, yeah, yes. Question. Sure. Um, you need to get into this in a minute. But I was wondering uh, about the proportion of respondents to the survey uh -huh. that who were seniors, yep. and whether that might be, whether that was in balance with the Montpelier area population, and if not, like that. Yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll look at that. I might scan it real quickly. It wasn't, and usually the survey company will balance that out, so you won't sit there and say, wow, we've got twice as many senior respondents as the population base, or twice as many in the 25 to 45. Uh, my, and I didn't spend, I'll be honest with you, a lot of time with that. But my initial reaction was, OK, that lines up reasonably closely in terms of the rates of the respondents to what your population distribution is. Okay. Now, we do, we haven't done it yet. We do have the ability in the data to look and say, well, are we getting different responses for the different age groups in terms of what they want to see, what they would use, all that sort of stuff. There are what we call cross tabs that are by everything from income levels to age to all that type of thing. We can kind of split the data and look for things that may be different among those different ages. Okay, thanks. Uh huh. So, one of the things we got down to was all right, you say you, uh, you, you, know, you want to do these things and you say you'd be strong users. Are you willing to increase your taxes to pay to get a facility of this nature built? So the first question talked about increasing taxes between $30 and $60 on an average home in Montpelier, property taxes, to really, at this point, to renovate the existing Berry Street gym. And that's really would provide that kind of level of funding to do that, that kind of tax. Now, obviously, some of the things we've talked about in there may not be happening in that kind of renovation. 
But in this particular case, 41% of the respondents said yes. 27% said no. But we have a huge piece in here, 70% maybe, 15% not sure. That's not unusual you know, when you're in a process like this where people go, well, it sounds kind of interesting, but I know a little more about it. So having a big piece in there that's unsure is not unusual, and obviously that has some bearing ultimately on the direction that a project may go in terms of a voter approval if it ever came to that. But that's, that's a reasonably strong, you know, you start going this way, you can get half of what's down here well over 50%. So that's a pretty decent response on in terms of property tax for making improvements to the Berry Street Center. Do you have questions? The next one then was a much higher level, it was talking about $200 to $350 a year. And this one was related to building a new facility with the types of amenities that were talked about. And that includes things like pools and fitness areas and gyms and other things. So bigger facility, higher price tag, so therefore the taxing question was higher. Even at this level, this wouldn't potentially fund the entire facility. Now, as might be expected, when we started to do that, the numbers started to change. Yes, went down to 25%, but really now, even the maybes and the not sures now are almost 40%. 22, 19, so a big chunk of people not sure. The no went up 34%. So now, the ability to take a, a taxing question of that size to the community becomes it's not impossible, but it's much more difficult. Yeah. What's the gross on thirty to sixty dollars and two hundred to three hundred fifty? In terms of what that could do, what that could flow. Yeah. So the so the so the article would say vote to approve X million dollars. Yeah. There is it, two grosses. It, there's a, a little bit of question in terms of that, but it's going to be that 30 to 60 is probably in about the two to three to maybe four million dollar range. The 200 to 350 is about 10 to 12 million. So, you know, it says, okay, the bigger facility from a taxing perspective, that's going to be a little bit tougher sell. That's understandable. Uh, we asked people then, so uh, if you didn't support one of these, why not? Well, really importantly, in here, 31% of the people said they wouldn't, or you're not sure, is I need more information about the project. Well, yeah. And so that says that's the big one. That's a little more encouraging. 21% said, I, you know, I oppose basically any tax increase. Um, at least that's not up here 31 or higher. That's a little bit better. Um, and then one of the other options we put in there, one, especially on the higher one, was would you prefer paying the lower amount just to do the improvements? That one, honestly, I thought would be up higher. That one, you know, hit 19 percent. But so people were not necessarily saying they wanted to substitute and just do the Berry Street project. But and, you know, that's we were trying to ask that question, find out. Well, people really just wanted to do that, and that's kind of their appetite from a taxing perspective maybe, but not necessarily on the direction that they want to go. Then the last question we had is just kind of a, more of an anecdotal question. Is it so compared to other, other issues in Montpelier, where does this rate? And in this particular case, high priority 23%, medium priority 29 so we're over 50% right there. Uh, very high priority was 13%. So in this medium to high priority, you're over 60%. Only 28 said it was a low priority. So this is still an issue that's out there from the citizen side of things that says, we think this is reasonably important to deal with. It's a good thing that question was asked before pothole season began. Yeah, uh, there's always that question. <laughs> So coming out of this, with all the information we gathered through the survey, through the uh, meetings, through the last community workshop that we did, here's the questions and the issues that are out there. And that's where we're going to focus the rest of our time. So what is this? Should we be talking about building a new center? Should we be talking about rehabbing and improving the existing Berry Street Recreation Center? 
where do you, if you build a new facility, where does it go? Does it go downtown? Oh, one of the other things I might mention, we didn't have a slide on this, but people, in terms of locational issues, the walkability was a very high response. So citizens in the survey side backed up what we heard in the community meetings and others that said walkability was very important. So where to build it? Is it downtown? Is it on the edge of town? Is it uh, some other location that may not be directly associated with um, the town of Montpelier? Who are our potential partners? How do we bring partners to the table with this? How do we fund a project of this nature, both capital and operations as well? And what amenities are in the facility? So what, what are we going to include in this if we're going to build this? And how do we ultimately move forward? So with that, what we've done is kind of boil this down to three options. And these are three kind of big picture options that are out there. The first one, and these are no order of priority, they're just there, that says you rehab the existing Berry Street Recreation Center. One of the things that's out there is there's no real option of doing nothing. Uh, the existing gym does not meet basic code requirements. It doesn't meet ADA issues. There's Basic improvements have to be made in that building to make it even functional in the future. So you can't say, oh, we're not doing it. You have to do something. So the first option is just do the minimal improvements that just deal with those things. What's all said and done, it's basically the same building. You're getting more usable space, you basically have an improved version of what's there now. You have the gymnasium space, but not much more. The second option is to say, we're going to do all of that stuff. But then we're going to make that basement level usable space. We're going to take the second level, make that usable space as well. So now you're actually gaining something out of this. And what we would try to do is factor in some of the spaces that were identified as being important, things like some level of fitness, some community use spaces, those types of things. We cannot get a pool in there. And basically, we're working within the existing structure. We can't really expand that building because of the site limitations. So, you know, but you're getting something else out of it beyond just the improvements to the, the basic uh, code and ADA issue. The second one is building a new facility. And that's going somewhere else, building a new facility. Now we can start talking about things like gymnasiums and certainly the aquatics piece of it now becomes more reasonable and you look for a site that will support that that type of a, a newer facility. And so you could do that, the premise would be then not sure what would happen to Berry Street, probably wouldn't under this scenario be utilized at all, or it might be some repurpose from a, some other use, that type of thing. The third option is basically a combination of the first two. You build a new center and you keep Berry Street in some form, so you have two basic facilities. So those are the three options. Kind of did a little pros and cons, a little bit of assessment of what this means, just to kind of put this in perspective. So if we're talking about rehabbing the existing Berry Street, and this is really the full improvement. This isn't just the code stuff. This is doing fixing up the basement, fixing up the upper level. Well, it's lower cost than building a, a brand new facility by a significant margin. It's in town, it's, it's, it's walkable, it's right there. It's in an existing building that the city already owns. So you do have a structure there. You're not starting from ground zero. And it's a little easier to fund, partly because it's not as expensive. The cons are you have really limited opportunities for new amenities. We, we have a limited space there. Uh, not even exactly sure to we look at it in a little more detail what all you can do with that bottom level and the upper level. But you're going to be limited by not only the size of the space, but the configuration of that. We can't change a lot. And certainly, that really means at this location, no pool. Uh, your partnership's a little more limited, pretty small facility. This one's basically focused, as it is now, on serving the needs of Montpelier residents and really not anybody else. Um, and you have a lack of parking. Parking is not a huge issue right now, but we make significant improvements to that building and utilization of those two other levels. We expect the use to go up substantially, so that's going to put a lot more pressure on you know evenings like tonight saying okay where do i park or i'm you know walking to do that capital costs maybe in the two to three million dollars range if we do the minimal just the code issues could be anywhere from up to five million to do a full improvement 
it's always a tough one to price, and these are just very basic estimates, but really difficult on renovations until you get in there because you find out that what you think and what the realities are once you actually start tearing into that building are two different things. So it's really hard to price uh, those improvements. And these, again, are pretty basic and could swing pretty, pretty big. The operation subsidy, when we say subsidy, that's the difference between the expense of operating the facility and the revenues that are brought in. It would be anywhere from basically where you are right now to maybe a little more money because you have more usable space, uh, you're going to have more uh, use of those uh, areas. So it might go up some, so it might increase your current subsidy to maybe 50000 a year, but reasonably small. If you go to the improved version, that certainly now says, okay, we have more usable space. Now that's probably going up by the subsidy aspect by 50 to 100,000. Again, that's the difference between expenses and revenues. That's not just revenue, or excuse me, expenses by itself. So that's kind of the rehab side. So the new center, the pros, well, it's now a full center. You can include aquatics and things that the rest of the amenity size to where they really need to be to service the community. You're going to potentially bring more partners because it's a more uh, uh, full service and a more broad-based facility. Um, it's coming out of the middle of downtown, potentially. And certainly, when you start talking in this type of relationship, it's, it's now much more of a regional facility. So it's not just serving um, residents of Montpelier. It's serving a much larger market area. Back to that, that kind of that reddish area we showed on the, on the demographic analysis. You will have, uh, if you get a new site where you can choose where you're going, you can hopefully have improved access and parking, be able to take care of the, the higher rate of utilization by planning for a site that's going to allow that for, or, to occur. The cons are high cost to build a brand new facility and one that's obviously substantially bigger than what's over at Gary Street now. It's likely not downtown. It's just going to require too big of a site. There's really nothing available. If you get it, it costs you a fortune probably just to acquire a site that's large enough to support a facility of that nature in the downtown core. And we'll certainly, from what we're talking about, need an equity partner. And that's directly related to the capital cost number, which could be anywhere from about $12 million, and that's definitely on the low side, at $20 plus million. The reality is, if we look at uh, the responses to the question where we said, again, that um, even people on the, you know, is, is iffy at best on the taxing question on the 200 to $350, excuse me, $250 a year on an average home. Uh, and again, that would at best fund 12 million. So we'll probably don't get everything that you want in the first phase. Even with that. So it's going to need more than just uh, funding from the city to make this occur. And there's where I was talking about you need some other partner that's bringing dollars to the table to get this over the top. The operation subsidy, depending upon again what's in the building, the size of those amenities could be anywhere from 150 to maybe as much as $350,000 a year. Does that operations subsidy take into account any potential cost savings that we have 4,000 people who? Live, don't live here, but we're here. No, I, I, that's what I'm saying. That's I've already factored in. So that's Your operating right. costs on a building like this may be well over a million dollars. So we're saying we could be generating half a million, maybe 700,000 in just revenue generated by users of the facility for programs and other types of things. So yeah, we're already factoring that into the equation. Now again, my caution is a very preliminary number. As we get further along with this, we're going to try especially on the capital, we're not, we're not architects. We don't build these things, so that's a little bit foreign to us, but we're going to hopefully uh, develop a relationship with some architects here so they'll be able to answer that question a little bit more. But we also have to define this project. Your operations costs and <coughs> estimates, they include personnel? Oh, yeah, well staffing, all the benefits, the utilities, your instructors, it's basically an all-in budget. Your, your insurance costs, it's, it's basically to run the entirety. So, and then the final one, which I won't spend much time on, is again, doing both of those. Obviously, you have two facilities, one in town potentially, one out of there. But the biggest issue is your, your costs, both capital and operational could go up pretty substantially. We don't know that that's really realistic. In a, in a perfect world, it's probably 
uh, it may be an ideal situation, but I don't know that it, economically the numbers work well. But it's there, if, if that's the direction that we want to go. So, bottom line is for you all here tonight is, what's really the right option, or maybe it's some variation of what I've shown up there, to meet the needs and the financial realities that are in place here? And really, what do you want to see in terms of key amenities? So we kind of laid out a pretty big scenario. What do you, what do you all think? What's, what's your impression based on what we're talking about? So I'm just curious, did you, did you evaluate an option that had everything else but the pool for a new facility? Um, no, not per se. I think one of these, you know, we don't have to look at the capital on an operations standpoint. Isn't that the biggest expense? It is. It's the biggest single capital expense in a project by a long shot in operations. And not that I don't want to pool, but no, I'm just, it's if you're going to lay out the scenarios, I think it would be interesting to put in the pool of scenarios a new facility that has the fitness, the basketball, and everything else without the pool. And we may very well do that just because of the need, if nothing else, to phase the project. And uh, that, that oftentimes happens as part of it. So that, that may be the case. Okay. Other thoughts? Well, I know that you had said with the existing center that there's no possibility for a pool. Is that just because the, the weight of the pool would be too much for that existing building, whether you did it in the basement or did it somewhere else? Yeah, I mean, basically, you'd have, you'd literally, if you were saying you wanted to do a pool there from a, a constructive building standpoint, you'd have to tear that building down, sorry, but you couldn't support all of that. So you basically bulldoze it to start again. That's why we could get a pool built then, but just the size of that, the pool would be pretty small, and it wouldn't have, it would be a limited thing that I don't even know that that would be worth doing. I mean, it just wouldn't be large enough to service much of the need anyway on that, and the deck space would be real small, and you know, so you'd be spending a lot of money for something that's not all that effective. I, I, it's just, for both of those reasons, it's not really effective. I mean, we kind of just eliminated that as, as a possibility. The other reality is you build a pool in like that that's going to be pretty strong draw, and now we have a little issue that says even if you get something on there, where are you going to park people? Because the utilization better go up dramatically with that. And so now we've got a whole other issue that goes with that as well. So on that existing site, even if you demolish the building, really couldn't do a pool of any magnitude just to simply request to be able to put that. And everything else goes with it. And then I guess my other question is, what sort of time frame do you guys realistically do have? Like a five-year plan or something? Um, I don't know. It depends kind of which way you're going on this. There is some sense of urgency from the city. I mean, you know, as they say, doing nothing is not an option. You've been living somewhat of a charmed life with the existing facility in terms of um, the code issues and, uh, and also the ADA. If somebody really pushes that, you don't have any really leg to stand on. So there's some sense of urgency that we cannot just keep going on here or we're going to get ourselves in trouble in a number of different ways. So I think some decision has to be made. Um, the reality is the bigger version, the bigger vision, if you will, um, that takes that takes time to pull your partners together, you have to find a side, everything else. You're in absolutely everything moving just like this year, a minimum of three years. Reality wise, you probably are looking at maybe a five year. And that's assuming you guys can find a site for a reasonable cost. Well, there you go. And all, let me say, the, yeah. the numbers I gave you were no site costs. That's all just building construction. So yeah. any site cost would be on top of the numbers I should, I've shown. And really, the first part of it, you try to find a site that you didn't have to pay for, but it doesn't require a lot of engineering. Not a lot of engineering has, you know, the infrastructure and utilities to it. And, you know, it, it takes a substantial site. So we want to also plan that says, okay, Maybe you don't do a pool in the first phase. Maybe you do some of these other things, but we have a site large enough where that could happen without sitting there well, now you gotta go to some other third location. Okay, now that becomes a real deal breaker. So it require, I mean, we've, we've been saying on the top, and I don't even know if you can do it, minimum, minimum of probably five years, and that includes building and parking. 
Uh, you know, how many five five acre sites? There, there has been more than one site owner who's talked seriously about possibly donating a site. Whether it's an appropriate site, I don't know. Um, so it's not something I would take for granted that we'll get a free site, but it is a legitimate thing to go out and seek. And I think as plans develop, sites emerge and we can pursue sites. The site's a huge issue. Yes, sir. So on that note, I'm relatively new town, but um, it makes a lot of sense to me the pool will be located right here um, at the high school. And so, again, I'm speaking with not a lot of uh, experience about how the local community functions, but in the town that I grew up in, um, that's how the town pool was. It was a high school, it was functioned as a high school, uh, you know, athletic uh, pool. Uh, and the rest of the time, outside of the school day, it was also a town pool. And, uh, made a lot of sense that way, but the, it seems to me that in your third option, what I was kind of looking for was keep the gym facilities and the kind of program space where it is today on Berry Street, but could maybe some real estate here, you know, city owned that could be used for a pool and uh, maybe divvy it up that way. I was wondering if that was looked at as an option, whether I could keep the cost down somewhat as a result. A um, couple things. We had conversations with the school district early on uh, about the property. There really is limited to no availability in terms of building build area on this. There's a lot of land here, but most of it's in the floodplain. So we're really limited in how much we can do it. Basically, kind of by both city and school district, but we just have no place to put it without taking something out we already have, because even with some of the fields on everything else is not you can't build on that. So despite the fact of what it looks like, it's we've been told that and to, we can't put it there. We actually looked at some floodplain maps and we had wiped out about half the field area and everything else. Can I just add one thing to that too? Because we started about where you are thinking yeah. so wouldn't that be fabulous? And it didn't quite fit by the school. But we are we had a pulled up things like uh, redstone property, which is walking distance. Something on the bike path, so kids could just get on the bike path and ride bikes. We're still playing around with ways to connect this to the school when we think about sites. But like, maybe not. Like you, our first so directly. Can we be here and this didn't work for, for physical reasons? So, you know, that we've kind of, some of the obvious things like that could be explored, kind of, eh, no, no, it's not quite as simple as you think. So, sites could be a huge issue. The other side, can you build a, a pool somewhere else? The realities are um, building standalone aquatic facilities are not a good idea. As we say, they're expensive to build, they're very expensive to operate. We co locate that with other recreation amenities, uh, what we call dry side amenities. It helps a little bit with utilization and with the cost recovery. Uh, we work literally, as I showed you earlier, all over the country, and we spend half our time dealing with facilities or standalone aquatic facilities either on a community or on, on a school level. They just they can't hardly afford to keep them open and trying to figure out ways to either add other amenities to them. So I, I caution the community and the city about going in that direction. It's economically in the long haul, it's not so much the capital, but the operational obligation it does pencil out. And so yeah, you know you could it's not saying you couldn't do that, but I would say you want to Put a pool and want to have other things with it to help help it do better economic. Jack, you have a question? Yeah, uh, well, it's more of a comment but, uh, to that end. There's a the facility in the West Lab, they have a community center pool facility just like you're talking about that I've, I've been to. It's fantastic. Um, I don't know if you, you guys have. Which, which, where is it now? Uh, it's in Lebanon or? Let's see, Upper Valley. Oh, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's not the Upper Valley, it's a different one. Uh, no, I'm not. Yeah, it's it's a community center. center. Well, yeah, let I me mean, see if we can see. It's in New Hampshire. Okay. Yeah. All right, we can see if we can look at that. Okay. I mean, the Black Center, that's uh -huh. nice too. Mm -hmm. I don't know, are there other facilities there besides just the pool? I don't know, I have to look that one up, Josh. I'm not familiar with that. You did it on Claremont. They put in a ten million dollar. What's in there? But it's a pool, and it's what else did they put in? It has some fitness, has some community rooms. I think it has a gym space. 
It's not a huge facility, but it, yeah, it does have all more than just yeah, yeah. So I, I grew up in Springfield, and after I left, I built the pool. Yeah. <laughs> Well, they had a $3 million part. The bank sent them a check for $3 million, which was critical to making that happen. So that would probably be part of the was a bad I just say, I'd recommend also looking, the town needs to move your Hermes Museum in Montana. Yeah, I know. We do tons of work. We get the uh, currents. Yep. So I was going to use currents as an example. So this is a study that is primarily a pool. It's, it's really just a pool without door kind of. Uh, uh, Matt's plan on that was around. always to add the rest of the amendments to that to be able to get the pool in the first phase. But that really, you know, when you go out the back side of it over there, when you go to the locker rooms and stuff, that's always supposed to have like a gymnasium and a fitness area as well. And that was always kind of the plan that it wouldn't just be a pool. Yeah, we know that we do tons of stuff in this pool. So know that we did that facility and some other. And that pool is a half size. It's not a full Olympic size pool. Oh, no. It's half size. They don't have and, um, It's open from about 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. every day. Yep. It was like a dollar for residents and more for non-residents. And it was pretty much full all day, every day. And um, the, uh, you know, the lanes for lap swimming were a little bit shorter, but there were always people using and that has a and big very recreational pool aspect to it. It's, it's very much a, a family yes. and you know, destination. There's a lot of uh, you know, swimming areas that are really primarily for kids. Oh, yeah. yep. uh, and so for a town like this, I think it could be a really interesting fit. It's not, it's, it's not a huge facility. It has some conference space that you know, any community groups can make use of. It has office space for city, uh, you know, parks and rec people to work out of. Um, and it's a neat balance. And there's a you know ropes course right next yep. to where there's you know some of those kinds of things. The big that, park area, the field yeah. area, it's right down the river. Yeah. Um, and I was going to add um, that we talked about the demographics of the town filling out the survey and who's in the month of your community. And I think it's important to think about who Montpelier wants to be and not just who Montpelier is. Mm -hmm. And I've heard a lot of discussion about attracting young families to town and reducing that average age demographic. And I think a rec center of this type is a way to do that. And when you look at the survey and it says the number one pool use would be um, a, 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 um, athletic, you know, workout space. I forget what it was for now. Yeah, there. fitness. But fitness. I think that's probably reflective of an older demographic filling out the survey, whereas if you want to build towards a younger community, I would think that an increase in recreation opportunities would be attractive to bringing in families to town. Yeah, and I, I, even some of the, the groups we talked to, the kind of quality of life issues, the ability to attract um, you know, employees to different businesses, all that stuff within that thing in terms of making, you know, Improving the livability of, of not only Montpelier proper, but the surrounding area. And that's certainly, and you probably, you know, certainly your time in Missoula saw that. And that's what these facilities typically do when they build a sense of community. They provide that opportunity, especially, you know, it's time of the year where it's a little difficult to spend a huge amount of time on Yes, sir. So just a couple of comments and then just a question. And I'll start with the question is uh, partnership wise, and, and you may want to address this, but like YMCA. You know, type sponsorship, partnership, and whatnot. If we look into that, or is that just not, like, not even a consideration we can't go there? Well, I think the question we have, and really what we're going to back up here with, is when we go even to the city council later, later this evening, is where, where do you want to go in terms of these options? So if there's a willingness to say, we would like to really keep going with that bigger recreation center issue, then that's a conversation that you can have. I just don't know that we're to that point yet. Okay. The one thing is now, uh, YMCA's have difficulty on the capital side, so it, they're not oftentimes bringing a whole lot of dollars to the table either. Sure. So they're not, a, they'll help on fundraising and other things, but most of the time they, they have a million or so and their big thing is they kind of put a building new facilities and try to be operators. But anyway, the, the short answer to that is we 
get a little further along that that is a realistic possible. And the reason why I asked that question first is my second comment is, you know, you look at places like Planet Fitness, and you look at, you know, First and Fitness in Berlin and whatnot, and I think some families have at least one membership to one of those places, if, yep. not, if not two. Yep. And so First and Fitness, you're talking $55 a month. So here I am, I pay my tax bill, which is rather hefty, and now I now pay a membership at First and Fitness, you know, because their hours are really good and they've got everything you put on that yep. slide. And then, uh, you know, like I said, my joint plan for this because they're open 24 hours a day because I can't go outside and run or work out or, or you know, do, you know, and, and whatnot. And I'm not saying, like, look at me, I'm my own demographic and whatnot, but, you know, those are all the same sort of things. And I'm somebody who works at Norwich, you know, as a professor who is, doesn't have access to those facilities, you know, because they've got their own limitations and, and whatnot, and which is exactly the reason why I chose Montpelier to have access to, you know, to these sort of things and not have to commute and, and do that sort of stuff with a limited facility, you know, construct as it is. So anyways, just random thought and, and observation. Can I ask, just hold that a minute? Sure. Do you support the bigger facility? Is that what you're? Yes, absolutely. And would you support it in the city when it was up on the hospital or up by National I, Life? I, would you, I, that still work? I, so, I, so we've lived all over the country and all over the world. We love the idea of walking and whatnot, but I think that the notion of everyone walking to the old facility and everyone walking to Shaw's and everyone walking to downtown, I think that's a dated notion. Uh, quite frankly, I think folks, if you build it, they will drive. I, I, I really firmly believe that. We did a bas we did we did a basketball game tonight at you know I coached the basketball game at Major Mason Middle School. And so Randolph drove here. Uh, seventh grade parents drove to there, eighth grade parents drove to there and whatnot. And so and I think from about November till about March they're gonna drive to the facility. So you know, and there's no reason in the world if we had those amenities there that maybe we don't do Main Street, maybe Main Street has something else and we drive it here and that becomes that community sort of hub, like, you know, kind of like we're talking about. But yes, I think people are going to drive considering that, you know, uh, we know there's times we drive to, you know, to Berlin, we drive to, you know, Barry to, to go ice skating, to do that, you know, to do that sort of thing. So I think they will drive, yes. Yep. I also think that if the facility, I would love to see it in the center. And uh, if the facility has a variety of options that appeal to a large people, and it requires driving, I have a feeling there'll be a lot of motivation for people to figure out some transportation that will get people here. I really like the idea of having it. I think it would be wonderful to have it downtown and, and it be part of the, of the structure. I love the downtown. Um, but if you had it located near some of the bike paths, then the, the older kids, high school kids, and middle school kids could bike there, yep. um, and that would make it, to me, just as accessible. I feel like I don't necessarily need it to be walkable. Bikeable would be nice. You know, and, and honestly, though, it, whatever it took to have the facility built it would be what I would support because I think it's so unique to me. It would not only help our community, but to bring people in, and that brings more revenue into the city, and the place that it's more about. Okay. So, from this group standpoint, if you're here tonight, I mean, again, we're doing a mini version of this presentation to council later, but it really focuses on these things. Okay, council, where do you want us to go with this? So, what would I say that the community meeting that was held earlier in the year, you all, what, what should I be telling council from your perspective what we should be doing? Okay, yeah. I'd like to see some rehab of the existing center happen. Okay. Because yeah, that's still a valuable location. It is walkable. It does have, I mean, it's got to be ADA. I don't know. I can't remember the things to make it ADA Yeah, it's going to still be several stuff. million dollars to get that thing up to speed and that's and that's you know you, you get a better version of what you have no real other thoughts in terms of what what do i tell council that you all said I, I, i'd like to see the city explore the partnerships i, I mean i you know i think it's really hard to have a discussion about 
two million versus twenty million when you have no clue if there's a private partner who's going to bring to the table a portion of that. Who are the user groups that are going to help fund the operations? And I think I, I, I think we need a much better, more defined business plan. Well, and that's actually what we, which one do you want us to go? And that's the key word. Which one of these options do you want us to see us explore more? Because we're not having to find any of these things, but we've got three different things on the table. If there's no appetite to go one or more of these directions, we we'll want to take it off the table so we're not wasting time. But it's exploring to try to answer some of those questions. Uh, can I just off like that? I mean, yeah. we're, we are collecting some of those clues. So talking, conversation with potential partner, I mean, if you have connections with people that you think the, the effort should be talking to, do tell and we want to talk more. But we have been talking with some major players. There is some interest. Yeah. And I think, so, so I mean, one option for us is to pursue and flesh out a scenario that is, you know, some large proportion is city bond, and another large chunk is uh, contributions of different kinds uh, through business and you know, governmental entities in the area. And, that, and we, we're not starting from zero on that. Yeah, we, we have done some legwork. And with some of the ideas we've come to say, we have, as, as Chris said, we, we have some indication that it's, it's worth exploring further enough introductory conversations that there are some of those out there. So can I just answer you, you asked me a question. I would say, I don't think it really, I don't think you need to choose one or the other to start collecting information on who are the user groups who would pay to use a facility? Who are the people who would invest in a facility? I mean, it's going to be, whether you build a new one or you rehab the existing, some of those user groups are going to be exactly the same. Pretty much exactly the same. Yeah, until, you, until you add a field house or a pool, they're going to be the same group. So I guess I don't think there's a huge difference evaluating more than one option. So I, if, if I were sitting here, I would say, don't pick one. Let's evaluate both of them because there's enough overlap that it's not a lot of extra work. So just from listening to everybody, it seemed like there was more of a incentive to build a new rec center and try and figure out how we can make that happen. Now, going back to the whole Claremont example, I mean, it was nice that they were able to get the $3 million gift from the bank. Is that likely to happen here? I don't know. But obviously, that's one of the things that you have to explore because the site cost is going to be a huge part of this. Yep. And being a taxpayer, one of the things um, that I'm concerned about is we just voted two major bonding things, the parking garage and the sewer facility upgrade, the water treatment facility upgrade. And I'm going, OK, you throw another $20 million on top of what we've already bonded. It's like, I'm starting to get a little scared about you know tax liabilities and, and what's going to happen on my property. And, and just for clarity on that, there is no way that the city has the ability or even bring forward a, a bond for 20 for this thing. That's We, we can't even get there. I would say on the appetite for this would be something under that. That's why to even talk about the new facility of any magnitude beyond something that's just reduced down and probably pulling the pool off as a first phase, it's going to require other dollars beyond what the tax dollars that that uh, Montpelier could put in to make that happen. That's kind of the premise is even in a perfect scenario, everybody said, we want to do this, you couldn't bond for $20 million on that if you wanted to. You never, I mean, the tax would be too high. I don't even know if you have the ability to even bond for that from a, uh, from a bond cap. Yes. But I don't, I don't think, again, as we said, I 50% of the total, you know, unless it's a project 10 million or less, now you can start having those conversations. But anytime you get up above that, I, I see somebody else is going to have to put dollars into the project beyond the city. Although, just to, I will say one thing, Joe. I think you do speak for it. There is a segment of Montpelier that will say, I'm taxed out. Yes. And I just, and as much as I love a pool, I yeah. don't have the ability to do that right now. And that's why you do raise up a legitimate point. Absolutely. I think that just goes back to my point, and this is Denver, this point over here is what demographic do we want to attract to Montpelier? Do you want to maintain status quo? If you want to maintain status quo, then just keep the Berry Street Center the way that it is, and you're going to maintain status quo. If you're going to attract a demographic and you're going to have the vibrancy, and you're going to have what it is that we, you know, that we know what Montpelier is to a certain extent and what Montpelier can be. 
then I think that that's what you're that's what you're going to attract. And I think that when you ask you know the National Life people, when you ask the UVMs, when you ask the Norwiches, when you ask the major you know corporations to invest and to advertise and to be a part of this initiative, I think that's appealing and that's attractive to them. I and mean, I think you're attracting a certain demographic, dem demographic, or demographic. But you know, and I'm not picking on the pickleball people. But you know, if you if you if you want to continue in that direction, then we can easily continue in that direction because that's status quo. And I don't think status quo is what we want up there. I think we want to move forward. So I think when you go forward to the council, I think that's what you tell them: is do we want to maintain status quo? Because status quo is what you have today in in, in present in, in present status. So. And I think one of the challenges too with Montpelier is you do have an aging demographic. Yes. Clearly, yeah. it's also a shrinking demographic. Remember, we lost 400 people from the last census. So, I mean, that's certainly a concern. Yep. Yep. Um, I was just um, curious, maybe you're already looking into this, but um, what kind of market there would be for hosting um, like pool tournaments oh, or things like that? In which case, does that generate heads and beds and hotel nights? And um, you know, and yeah. if we're changing the demographics of the community, does that change the tax base? And if those answers to those questions are yes, is it possible to use the same funding we used for the parking garage of like the deferred? Tax, you know, down the road, this is going to generate more taxes and kind of pay for itself kind of concept. Could we use that same tax infrastructure for supporting a recreation center? Okay. Anything else? Uh, yes, uh, one of the things that I, I would caution against is if you are building a new facility to not include the pool up front, I think you're cutting a lot of your funding that you get for tournaments for things like that, and you're going to lessen the amount of people that are going to use it. If, if according to the survey that was one of the big things, I think I think you would you would be, you know, kind of cutting off your nose if you didn't put the pool in initially because people are going to say, okay, well, I was willing to give the money, but now it's going to be 10 to 15 years before I get the pool. Well, that's not, that's not going to be. And that's, and that is a concern because that's been expressed on that. Um, there are some communities that they've done the same thing and the pool's been up there, but there just hasn't been the ability to, to do that. So they've sat there and said, okay, we can get something. And, but you know, it clearly designs where the pool's going to go. And, and you, you haven't said no, you just said we've got to do that later. Not ideal, but that, that can be done in some instances. And it just is a matter of what can you get done and, and, and what can you go over the top. You know, even some of the things we've been having some conversation with, you know, the partners, and just trying to understand what are the things that keep you at the table or keep their interest, trying to understand, does it need to have certain things, does it not, you know, what are things that are deal breakers for them, and what are things that make the thing entice it? To try to understand that in terms of other sources of potential funding, what, what that will mean, so absolutely. Okay? Yep. Just a quick question, so I'm going to build the new recreation center. Is it your opinion that that was the way to go, that there's really no place in downtown to do that? Or is there, so it, it, does that become a regional question by de facto? Um, I don't know if it's de facto, but it probably was at least we talked about three site locations. One was downtown, the other one was edge of town. We're probably more in the edge of town category than trying to find enough building. You know, could you build a, a facility in downtown? Yeah, you probably could, but but you will the cost to do that may may never get it done. It's nothing's impossible, and you you could build the facility legitimately downtown, but uh, the cost implication from a site perspective and what you'd have to do in that building to get it in there, I, I think at some point you're going wow, you know that that's just going to put it out of reach. Traffic. Well, the traffic, and then how do we get the people there? Um, you know, the reality is a, a pool is going to end up being a regional draw. And we, we stick it in downtown, and we just get people going, oh my gosh, I'd love to go to a pool, but I'm not driving down there because it's going to take me forever. And I, if I can't find a place to park or whatever, it's probably. So I think that starts to say, well, now maybe we have to be edge of town. Now we think we get more in edge of town, I understand, you know, that's pretty nebulous. But yeah, there are possibilities. Like here, for example, it's, yeah. it's, it's edge and it's close to the state. So that is one way to try to do three both things. Yeah, and still saying, okay, we're not going to ride it down to the we're going to place like reasonably it. still walkable. And then after that, you start, okay, now we got to look for something that's 
that's more regional. The other thing just is who you get potentially as partners, and we've even asked the partners, are things, is your potential involvement site driven? It says, if it's here, we're in. If it's not, we're out. Or this is all okay, that's not okay. So we've been trying to ask the questions as it relates to sites. Are some of those things deal breakers for potential partners? Haven't heard a lot that's, that's really said, oh, that's put us in a box yet. Yeah. Yeah, question. I don't know of any examples of this, but I'm just curious. You know, one of the things that hurt me a little bit with the parking garage is that really the garage is for people who are not from Montpelier. It's for the people who are coming in from out of town, and it's going to be the people from Montpelier who are paying for the garage. Now, I'm all about supporting downtown businesses. I love to shop at them and, and eat, eat at them, but that was something I thought a lot about with that question. And with the pool, I imagine there will be more Montpelier residents really benefiting from it. But, like you say, I think it will also be a regional draw. There's no question. And so I'm wondering, you know, how can the region invest in it? And, you know, there's a 7,000 person tax base or yep. less here in Montpelier. There's some more people, if you look beyond Washington County, um, how do we leverage the rest of the Washington County tax base? You know, uh, people who might drive to another town today, um, you know, especially maybe north and northeast of town here, um, what would compel them to, uh, or not compel them, what, what, you know, what, what mechanism would there be to potentially tax or raise revenue from people in those communities who are going to end up recreating here? Um, is, is there something that we can do to, to do that? Well, I, I think that's certainly on the table, especially when you start getting talk about a regional uh, approach. We've had some initial discussions with some of the neighboring communities. Um, they haven't expressed a lot of willingness to want to tax their residents for that. Sure. But, you know, I, I think all of that becomes part of the equation potentially. Yeah. That's what we're trying to figure out. So who, who's a realistic partner for this and, and try to answer those questions? You know, in the, you get another entity that's a partner, that has a big impact on, um, on site because, you know, another taxing entity is going to want something that's close to their their community, their taxing base. So it, that, that starts to dictate a little bit more on, on where we go. But, you know, we've been trying to have those conversations. And you know, part of our thing is, if you're a regional facility, it shouldn't be expected a community of 7,000, even if you have the ability to do it, should take on the full funding requirement for a facility that should serve a population base that's four times that. My simple answer is no. You, you, you need to be getting the people that are going to be using it uh, to, to pay for that. But that may not happen. Well, I, I don't need to be speaking too much here, but I'm just going to say, you know, the U32 high school mm -hmm. is a, a large lot. Um, definitely not in the floodplain. No. Um, extremely close, however, to downtown Montpelier. It's really not any further than many other edge of town locations. Um, clearly has a regional, you know, potential to be a regional center. Uh, again, has the opportunity to provide you know a, a sports uh, option for students there. Maybe it can be a shared facility between Montpelier and U32 students for you know for athletic teams. I just wonder uh, that could be another. You know, yeah, we've actually we've been out to U32. We, we've kind of looked at that. I, I agree with you. In some respects, it's not a bad location. Here's the word for the state and what had been going at first with fitness initially. I can't remember if it was through state resources or BSEA, but we could get a discounted membership through the right. state. And it's a way to tap into a whole market of people who may not even live here, but they may work in the area. All right. Well, I appreciate the time this evening. This is why we're doing this, trying to get some direction out of this. Uh, so we're going to see what council tells us tonight, but we still have, regardless of work to be done on the project, we're just trying to get a little more sense of where we want to go. So your input's been very valuable. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you.